And when it came to the ceremony itself, Megan said the experience lasted three nights and was, quote, incredibly intense. Everybody's journey is different. The second night, I went to, to hell for eternity. Um, yeah. And to just knowing eternity is um, like t torture in itself because there was no beginning, middle, or end. So you have like a real ego death. And Megan says the ayahuasca was able to help her in ways that therapy and hypnotherapy couldn't before. It just goes straight into your soul, and it takes you to the psychological prison that you hold yourself in. So it's, it's your own version of hell, and I was definitely there. I'm also interested in religious experiences, and for one reason or another, and it's a bottomless mystery, um, there are agents that reliably produce religious experiences, and no one knows what in the world to do about that. That's for sure. Talk about a strange trip. It's mind blowing. Do you guys know what ayahuasca is? Oh yes. <laughs> so we went to we went to Costa Rica to do ayahuasca like in a proper setting, like with indigenous people. And I was thinking it was like glamping or something like that. It's still gonna be like a some kind of five star experience. And you get there and you really are in the middle of the jungle and you don't get to eat after like 1 p.m. You have to walk a very far distance to get your water. You can't shower because they're in a drought. Nothing glamorous about it. It's all a part of sort of making you vulnerable so that you surrender to the experience. You know, and it's certainly the case that, like I firmly believe that the world is not the way we perceive it. It's deeply, it's deeply strange. And I do believe that the hallucinogens reveal that. Um, there's a narrative aspect to it. There's a religious aspect to it. There's an, a meaningful aspect to it that we don't understand. We can't understand it scientifically, or we haven't been able to. The scientific viewpoint excludes that to some degree. And I think the best evidence for that probably does come from hallucinogenic experience. Now, people have, clearly, people have a biologically instantiated religious instinct. Now, it's possible that that only speaks of our peculiar biological nature, that it doesn't reflect broader reality as such. But if you go deep enough into the psyche, what you, it becomes increasingly difficult to separate what you discover from reality. I'm going to show you some magic. It's the real thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's all the real thing. Just got to a, a, a point where these people can't differentiate between reality and fiction. It's normal to be told what beautiful looks like. But is it normal? We say no. We won't accept a world where any of this is normal. So we're removing the word from our products and advertising. When I started this book, I thought, okay, biotechnology and CRISPR, it's the most amazing thing happening in our time. And then I realized by the end, I was understating the case. So do you think this biotech revolution will be as big in scope and impact as the digital revolution was? Oh, I think the biotech revolution is going to be 10 times more important than the digital revolution because it allows us to hack the code of life. And we shouldn't be afraid of using this technology to make ourselves healthy. But, but the thing is, is the deeper you go into biology, the more it shades into something that appears to be religious because you start analyzing the fundamental structure of the psyche itself. And, and it becomes something, well, it be becomes something with a power, with, with a, with a, with, with a power that transcends your ability to resist it. Hmm. So it's, it's too upsetting to everybody else to call anything normal. I mean, this is insane. This is insane. And, you know, it's, it's very unfashionable to be normal now. Everyone has to be different, which obviously is philosophically problematic because if everyone's different, it just creates total chaos. <laughs> Whoa, we're officially in the future. Dude! What do you think? Here's real Tom on the left, fake Tom on the right. Can you see the difference? That's... 
crazy. This scares me. The technology today. Well, deep fake videos like this have been watched by millions of people over the last couple of weeks on TikTok, and you can see why experts are warning this could get very dangerous. It's just evidence. You can't believe your lying eyes anymore with the internet. Video heads, Mr. and Mrs. You gotta keep them together because they're madly in love. Prepare to meet Mr. Angry Eyes. Yeah, that's the end of Mr. Potato Head and Mrs. Potato Head. And this is one of the more frightening examples in the end, isn't it? Back in October, Disney was praised when it decided to put disclaimers before some of its more problematic films. Why? Rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact, learn from it, and spark conversation to create a more inclusive future together. It's, it's, what is it about society now where people are really looking for a fence where there is none? But now, it's just like, you know what, you really have to use your critical thinking and critical seeing because these people will fool you. It uses artificial intelligence to analyze an existing photo, digitize it, and then apply techniques, apply algorithms to the photo to make it do things that it couldn't originally do. Pitched as a way to bring life to old photos. Another way to you know, bridge the distance, bridge time, and bring people together. Yesterday, Hasbro announced it was removing the Mr. and Mrs. from the toys. It's just, it's just a really sad indictment on, on where society is, has arrived at at the moment. We might have to ban all make-believe. You know, as I said earlier, every, every, every week there's something else. Um, and it's, it's just getting to a point where it's almost impossible to keep up with. Earlier this week, Dr. Seuss's Enterprises announced that they'd stop publishing some of the books from the author's collection because of racist and insensitive imagery. Five other titles gone too, effective immediately. These books portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong, says a statement from Dr. Seuss Enterprises. Disney is rather selective in what diversity and inclusion they will champion. And Nick, it doesn't end there. Again, just this week, we had eBay banning the reselling of those Dr. Seuss books that got banned last week, those six books that will no longer be published. Uh, you can buy Hitler's Mein Kampf on eBay, but not Dr. Seuss. Stop politicizing toys and stop politicizing children. I think this is, this is one of the most dangerous things that, that we need to be talking about. Who's that protecting exactly? I just think this is a really dangerous territory to, to be going down. But when you combine that with the increasing power and influence of artificial intelligence, do you create a recipe? It is very much dependent upon right now what goes into it. It's the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. If you program biases into it, it will act in accordance with its programming. But as it gets smarter, as it gets better, you will see us move from this narrow AI to what's called artificial general intelligence. That's where the real danger lies in terms of what AI can do. The girls are safe, healthy, as any other babies. In 2018, a Chinese doctor edited the embryos of three Chinese babies so that they and their descendants would be resistant to the HIV virus. I think we still need to understand the motivation for the study and what the process was for informed consent. Scientists worldwide condemned him for going rogue. In China, at first, for about a day, he was celebrated as the first person to create designer babies. But even the Chinese were appalled by what he did, and eventually he gets tried and put under house arrest. Since that event, Doudna has been hosting a series of international conferences designed to hammer out ethical guidelines for using CRISPR. I mean, everything Morgan's saying is spot on, right? That you, you have these, these dilemmas, and essentially what you really have with AI is you have something that's really an ethics dilemma. Right, because even when we get to the point of very advanced AI in the future that will ultimately, the goal as he said, which is pretty scary, the goal of allowing machines to determine whether or not someone, for instance, is a, a, a terroristic threat, whether or not a, a target, an enemy target needs to be taken out or a human life needs to be ended because the AI believes that, 
that all begins with the ethics of the creator. The AI creator essentially is imposing their own ethics. And so when you do have this race between China, the United States and Russia over the control over AI, you're essentially imposing your own ethics into those computers and deciding what is a value and what is not. And, and, and I think there's a major question here that really is being ignored by so many of these superpowers around the world. Right, because AI doesn't have its own ethical or moral code and compass. It, it's created by the human who's, who's working on this technology. Sometimes the objective world and the narrative world touch. You know, that's the union synchronicity. And I've seen that many times in my own life. And so in some sense, I believe it's undeniable. You know, we have a narrative sense of the world. For me, that's been the world of morality. That's the world that tells us how to act. It's real, like we treat it like it's real. It's not the objective world, but the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be Christ. But I don't know what to, I'm, that seems to me oddly plausible. Yeah. Well, but I still don't know what to make of it. It's too, it, partly because it's too terrifying a reality to fully believe. I don't even know what would happen to you if you fully believed it. If you believed in the story of Christ or if you believed that history and, and let's say the narrative make meet, let's Both, say. I yeah. think, I think you, because when you believe that, you buy both those stories. You believe that yeah. the narrative and the objective can actually touch.